Shalom, shalom, friends and family and fellow believers and followers of the way, followers of Yeshua, the Messiah. Hey, today is Thursday, July 30th, and um, there's some interesting things happening in our world today with respect to faith and primarily with respect to the Torah and the observance of the Torah. A couple of passages from the Bible. Um, think of Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the Torah of the Most High. And in his Torah does he meditate both day and night. Joshua chapter 1 Verse 8, this book of the Torah shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Um, we also know of the reference in the New Testament, in the book called Revelation, of a dragon being wroth and angry with a particular group of people. Why? Because um, they kept the laws. They kept the laws, the Torah of the Most High, and they had the testimony of Yeshua, the Messiah. Don't miss it, uh, friends. There is a shift that's happening in the atmosphere, in the world of faith, um, in the Christian world, in the Messianic world, um, there is an awakening um, to the truth of the purpose of the Torah. What is the Torah? Well, depends on who you ask. Traditionally, it's always been held to be the first five books of what we call the Bible. Uh, but you'll notice there's an exchange in the New Testament where Yeshua is speaking about the Bible. and he says, um, your Torah, doesn't it say, isn't it written in your Torah that we are called Elohim? Um, and he's making a reference to a passage in the book called Psalms, or the book of Psalms. So Yeshua considered, you can argue, uh, by including the Psalms, that Yeshua considered Torah or instruction to be anything that included references to uh, the first five books. And this is very important, okay? So today, just briefly, I am going to begin a careful walk through the book called Deuteronomy. The book called Deuteronomy. Um, Deuteronomy, um, in its Latin or its English name, carries this meaning. Dudo, two, right? And nomon double law or second law. Okay, this is what it's known as uh, and referred to in the English-speaking world. In Jewish circles, it's also known as Mishneh Torah. That word Mishneh means um, second. It can also be translated, uh, well, yes, second. Uh, think about, for example, uh, Joseph, when he was the viceroy, or the second in command to the pharaoh in Egypt, he was called Mishneh Lamelech. The same thing as Mordecai in the book of Esther. Toward the end of the story, Mordecai became Mishneh Lamelech, only second in command. Also, the term Mishneh can carry the connotation of um, addition, additional, or extra, okay? Um, we see this in the account of the Torah, where the children of Israel are gathering manna that fell from the heavens. And they were told uh, to gather double the amount of manna because a double amount of manna would fall on the sixth day. So in that way that they wouldn't have to try to gather any on Shabbat. And it says in the text that the extra manna that will fall on the sixth day or Friday would be Mishneh. Mishneh, okay? Um, what is so important about the Torah? Um, that it's echoed so many times. Joshua is warned to never let it leave from his mouth. Uh, David sings the, 
the praises of the Torah, okay, um, throughout the book of Psalm. Uh, Psalm chapter 119 is a virtual love song to the Torah of the Most High. But then even into the prophets, we find the same thing. In the book called uh, Malachi or Malachi, in chapter 4, verse 4, we read this, okay? The prophets are about to stop speaking, and silence is about to fall until the time of the Messiah comes about and the New Testament canon would begin to be written. Uh, but silence is about to fall, and the prophets are speaking for the last time before this quiet period. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Remember you the Torah of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him. Okay, so it's called the Torah of Moses, sure, because Moses was the conduit. He was the mediator by which the Torah um, was brought down. He was a messenger. But, Zichru Torah Moshe, Avdi, remember the Torah of my servant Moses, Asher Tzivitioto, which I commanded him. The Torah is the revelation, okay, is the revelation of the character, okay, of the character, of the essence of who the Most High is. We know that later on, with the coming of Messiah Yeshua, that his express image was shown in the person of the Messiah, but the revelation of the Most High, yud heh vav -Hey, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that revelation was given to Moshe, and we have possession of it. Okay, so it's mentioned over and over again, uh, the importance of the Torah and the import importance of maintaining it and observing it, observing it and being careful to uh, observe the words. Um, again, I'm just opening, opening up uh, the beginning of what will be a journey, you and I together, through the book called Deuteronomy. I might not address every single Torah portion, but I will do my best to hit the ones that carry uh, the most weight. How does the book Deuteronomy start off? It starts off different than the rest of any of the books of the Torah. Okay, it's called Second Law, again, because Moshe, in a sense, is offering his last will and testimony um, to the children of Israel. And he's rehashing, and he's going back, and he's saying, this is what, you know, it's spoken in first person, language throughout. I said this to you, and then you said this to me. Um, but it starts off differently, okay? And it's different throughout in that in the first four books, we notice that there's always the phrase, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, and the Lord spoke to Aaron saying. Um, we don't see that. Why? Because the stage has been given to Moshe, the faithful servant, of the Most High, the faithful servant, the faithful servant. Um, here's how it opens. It opens like this, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Ele hadvarim asher diber Moshe el kol Israel be'ever hayarden b'midbar b'arava mul suf b'in paran u'v'en tofel ve'lavan ve'hatserot ve'dizahav. And these are the words that Moshe spoke to the children of Israel. The stage is all his, okay? And he's getting his opportunity to reinforce, okay, and to strengthen the people. Um, two quick, quick things, a couple quick things. Faith. Faith is the big thing that Moshe is trying to reinforce uh, to the people because he knows that his death um, is it's coming. It's 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 pending. Faith is what he wants to reinforce more than anything. Why? Uh, because the biggest loss faced by the Israelites, um, the biggest loss or the biggest sin came as a result of faithlessness. One of the biggest sins. Of course, we know that the sin of the golden calf was grievous. Um, but through all that they had seen and through all that they had witnessed with respect to the power of the Most High, a time came for them to simply believe based on what they had been shown, based on the track record of the Most High, and they failed the sin of the 12 spies, okay? 10 of the 12 spies 
brought back a faithless report and did not believe. And the punishment uh, came down very stiff. Okay, so he's not going into the land. Moshe is not. He's not going into the land. But what he wants to do is he wants to reinforce the importance of faith. What is the essence of faith? I want you to, want you to think of Exodus chapter 17, verse 12. I'm going to write for you the Hebrew word for faith. So the Hebrew word for faith is emuna. Is emuna, emuna. And emuna is a word that is associated with something that you might not think it would be associated with. Emuna. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 12, um, the backdrop is a fight or a battle with the uh, Amaleki, the Amaleki, Amalekites, okay? And Moshe is placed upon a high ridge. He's standing up on a high ridge and he's holding his arms up. He's holding his arms up, right? And as the battle rages, as long as the people can see the arms of Moshe up, the battle goes the way of the Israelites. Okay, Moshe gets tired and his arms start to go down, and then the battle starts to swing toward the Amaleki. Not that Moshe has power in and of himself, but because Moshe is being established as that mediator, uh, um, as the go-to guy, as the tangible person that people can respond, react to, or look to in the place of the Most High. This is being done. Okay, and in the text, it says that when Moshe's arms get tired, then you have Ahar, um, Aharon and Hor. Okay, Aharon, Moshe's brother, and Hor, they put, they sit him down on a rock, sit Moshe down on a rock, and then they put rocks underneath each one of his arms, and they hold his arms up, right? And the text says, Vayehi yadav emuna. And so it was that his arms were emuna. Emuna means steady, steadfast, okay, resilient, okay? What else is in the root of that word? Well, every Hebrew word, or most Hebrew words, have a three-letter root. And in this particular instance, the letters Aleph, Mem, and Nun, or the three-letter root um, of this word. It's the three-letter root of this word. And from that word, we get Amen. Amen. Okay, the thing that people say at the end of prayers, I've said at the end of their prayers, the word, it's a reaffirmation. Okay, it's saying that I believe it to be true, that it's, stead that it's steadfast and that it is sturdy, okay? That's a little mini Hebrew lesson for this short opening to um, the book of Devarim. And the faith that he wants them to have is based on their experience. Based on their experience, okay? You've seen more than enough to know that the Most High loves you, Okay, he cares for you. Okay, he heard the your your cries and the moans of your affliction, and he remembered the oath that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Okay, and he sent Moshe in order to bring you out empathy and love. Okay, um, the first instance can be found in Exodus chapter four, verse thirty-one, where Moshe displays the power of the Most High by turning his mate, his staff, into a into a tanin into a serpent, okay? The Most High turned it into a serpent. The people saw and they believed, right? They saw and they believed and they said, hey, we know that there's someone up there, out there, okay, um, who loves us and cares for us and he's coming to redeem us, okay? Second instance, Exodus chapter 14, verse 31. First time was Exodus 4, 31. This time, Exodus 14, 31 at the parting of the Sea of Suf, or the Sea of Reeds, okay? They saw the display of the power of the creator of the universe, okay? 
who opened the sea for them to walk through on dry ground and then subsequently drowned their enemies. This enemy that you see here, today you will see them no more. So he displayed the love first and the empathy in chapter 4, verse 31 of Exodus. And in 1431, he displayed that I do in fact have the power to deliver you from your situation. Love and power. Both of those, so far, we're on our way to a very healthy relationship. And then finally, in Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 9, we find an instance where, or the instance, where Moshe is up on the top of the mountain, and he's speaking with the Most High. Let's go there briefly. Uh, Exodus 19.9, verse 9 says, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, hine anuchi ba elecha be'av ha'enan, ba'avur yishma ha'am, bedabri imach, ve'gam becha ya'aminu le'olam yaged, vayaged Moshe, et divrei ha'am el Hashem. And the Most High said to Moses, Indeed, I am come to you in thickness of cloud so that the people will hear as I speak with you, and also that they will believe in you forever. Not believe in, in Moshe from the standpoint of some idolatrous form, but believe in the communication that you have with me. Okay, this is why Moshe, and rightfully so, is revered to this day um, as the greatest prophet of Israel, even though we know that one came later who was much greater, and that was Mashiach Yeshua, who was born to Joseph and Miriam in Bethlehem. Okay, uh, Moses also wrote about this later on in Deuteronomy chapter 18 when we get to that point. Okay, we're almost done here. As a part. Again, this is just an introduction to um, what will be an ongoing coverage of the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, and in Deuteronomy chapter 1, I want to take you to verse number, let's look at 30. Deuteronomy 1, 30. Okay, here's the case that Moshe is laying out before the children of Israel. He loves you, he loves you, and he loves you. And he proved, he proved that by hearing you and coming to your aid. You know of everything that he, he did, okay? Faith should be based on what have you done for me lately or what is the track record that I can look back to in order to know that I can have, that I can put my trust in you now and moving forward. Verse 30 says, Hashem Elohechem ha'olech lifnechem hu yilachem lachem kechol asher asa itchem b'mitzrayim la'inechem. Yud hey vav hey, your Elohim who goes ahead of you, he shall fight for you. Like everything that he did for you before your eyes. In other words, he's saying you know already, okay, of what he's capable of. You've seen the miracle. You've seen the pillar of cloud by day in which he led you and the pillar of fire by night in which you led and he led you. You know, you saw the sea of reeds be split. You saw the plagues fall on and crush the kingdom of Egypt and bring the Pharaoh to his knees. So based on what you've seen, faith should not be a problem for you. Being steadfast and sturdy like the arms of Moses, which is where we get the word from, and Mona, faith, to be steady, to be steadfast, to be resilient, it should be no problem for you based on that. Verse 31. And in the wilderness, as you have seen, the Most High carried you like a man would carry his son all the way on your journey until you have come to this place here and now. What a picture of, of love and care. What a picture of tenderness that he carried you like a man would carry his son, like a man would carry his child. All the way. It should make you think of the poem, or makes me think of the poem, 
or whatever, you know, footprints, you know, by the seashore. Why was it that when things got the most difficult that I only saw one set of footprints, you went off and left me? No, it's not that. I carried you. It was then that I carried you during the, during the worst of those times. Sadly, in verse 32, it continues, And in this matter, And in this matter, you did not believe or you have not believed in the Most High. You have failed Him. You have failed Him in the matter that you did not believe Him, that you did not have faith. Okay, we know what the punishment was. Um, we know what the judgment was that was passed for those who would not accept. They literally rebelled against the word of the Most High, even in, in uh, the chapter that we just left from, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Moshe says in Hebrew that the people, well, in English it translates it as they murmured in their tents. But the root word of the word that he used that we have translated as murmured the root letters are he, arish, and gimel. Okay, laharog, from the same word, which means to kill. To kill. So they murmured, but they slandered with their mouth the Most High. Okay? They slandered with their mouth the Most High. And this is the bottom. This is where we've hit rock bottom here, you guys. This is what happens when love, okay, when love is circumvented, when, when uh, love, which the, the Most High displayed by hearing their cries and making himself known, power, which he displayed at the parting of the sea, okay? And then finally, the third thing he did, Exodus 19.9, was show that I have given you someone tangible, someone here that you can touch, that you can handle, uh, who is my immediate mediator. He's the go-between. That should be the, found, the firm foundation for a bedrock of solid emona or faith. Excuse me. But instead, instead, um, faithlessness caused one of those pillars to be circumvented. Verse 27, this is what happens when faith is not mixed in, okay? Um, and then there's a break in the relationship because of the inability to have faith or to make yourself vulnerable with the Most High. Ceding control and saying, you know, whatever you will in my life, it's right and it's good. Verse 27, it says, eh, yeah, verse 27 uses the word to kill. Vateragnu uh, alechem, And you slandered. You slandered in your tents. Vatomru. And they said this. Here's the worst part. Besinat Hashem otanu hotzienu me'eretz mitzrayim latet otanu be'yad ha'emori le'hashmidenu. Because of the hatred of Yud Hey Vav Hey, because of the hatred of the Most High Yah, He brought us out of Egypt to turn us over into the hands of the Emory or the Amorites so that they can kill us. And that's where I'm going to stop for this opening of the book of Deuteronomy. When faith or the leap to, to make yourself vulnerable in any relationship. But in faith, the inability or the unwillingness to make yourself vulnerable and take that leap of faith based on everything that you've seen, based on everything that they saw and they knew, and even you and I in our lives. I'm sure some of you have a, a testimony of having been brought out, having been brought through, um, and you know that, you know, it was no one but him. And you stand on that. You've stood up in houses of worship with a cordless mic and you've had people in tears. And it's real. Hold on to that. Hold on to your success story of 
being 25 years clean from alcohol or substance abuse. Some have been homeless. Some of you have been homeless and have been without and been destitute. Some have fallen prey to, um, to sexual sin or trafficking or a lot of things. And you're standing upright now. You're standing upright and you're walking in the way. Hold on to that and never circumvent the love of the Most High and turn it into hate as we read uh, that the ancient Israelites did. Okay, so that's it for this short opening of the book called Devarim or Deuteronomy. Okay, um, and as I said at the beginning, there's something happening in the world today with respect to the Torah, observance and keeping. The world is awakening, awakening to the fact that, it's, that it is the Torah of the Most High. It is the words that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, as Yeshua quoted, it's talking about those first five books. The prophets quote the first five books. The Psalms quote the first five books. The judges quote the first five books. Every principle that you find in the New Testament is firmly rooted in the first five books. Okay? So as I leave you, remember, when it comes to emunah, or when it comes to faith, Exodus chapter 17, verse 12, think about the fact Vayadav, vayahi yadav emuna, and that the arms of Moses were steadfast and that they were firm and that they were resilient. Okay? Let's uh, pray that the Most High will strengthen and give us that type of, of faith. Okay? All right. Uh, shalom to everyone, and I'll see you again soon.